All right, we did a video on value again. I know. Ugh. Anyway, it's hot for this. He's just so out of control. Um, he's just, just such an idiot, a liar, lying idiot, liar or an idiot. Pick one. It's one of the two. He's either a colossal idiot or a colossal liar. So he can't be this. He can't keep getting it this wrong. He keeps changing the goalposts, as they say. Just cliche playing this game. So the reason why we brought up Cupcake and we brought up Nail in the Eye was because he was making the claim that these are arbitrary differences. And he's still trying to make the diff the argument that there are arbitrary differences, and they're just not. They're fundamentally different than all of the things in the universe. Consciousness is substantially different than anything in the universe. And the value difference between feeling the worst you can feel and feeling the best you can feel is a huge value difference. No doubt about it. It's just silly to argue anything else. And, well, it's not silly. It's obnoxious and retarded. So that's what he is. He's an obnoxious retard. Anyway, so, you know, I already made this video, but the camera got too hot and bailed out on me. 40 minutes in, I was almost done. It's just so irritating. So I really don't have much motivation, you know. So you're just gonna have to take it for the way it is. Um, all right. So he's he's trying to turn. Uh, he draw draws little pictures of suffering over here and little pictures of a cupcake over here on pieces of paper and says there it's a neural configuration. Therefore, it's nothing. And obviously, we have all kinds of neural configurations that do all kinds of things and we're not conscious of them and. They're substantially different than conscious ones. It's just silly to sit there and say you can just draw some squiggles and say, there, I, that's a picture of consciousness. No, that's a picture of a reflex. That's a picture of a burp. I don't know. It's a picture of nothing in terms of saying you've now drawn consciousness. You've identified it and you put it somehow in the picture. So he says he used a little, little bit of red lines in here. The little red lines now make that suffering. That's all that suffering is, little red lines. It's not a real value. It's just little red lines. Um, anyway, subconscious process is not the same as conscious process. Clearly they're different processes and consciousness is the game. Um, consciousness versus unconscious arrangement of brain space. Okay, so again, just the same argument. The value of a consciousness, a conscious experience versus the value of uh, identified cause. So this is this projected versus actual value argument and he just doesn't recognize that there's a difference between uh, a lump of cheese in the, in the store that's going to satisfy your hunger and say a child in the parking lot that just got hit by a car and is you know got a big bloody wound and is screaming in pain um, huge value difference huge difference in the generation of having of, of it being a significant event the cheese is only significant because of an arbitrary connection between your stomach and the satisfaction of desire and conditioned responses with uh, Pavlovian response. It's not a Pavlovian response to associate child in pain with a bad thing because you've been a child in pain. You've been in pain. You identify with the experience. Very different. You don't feel the cheese is cheese. You feel the child's pain very different experience, very different designation of a value event. So you're just too, I mean, this is stupid for me to have to explain why a child in pain is different than a lump of cheese is because this kind of, isn't this, is this what the internet's supposed to be? Oh yeah, this is brilliant. Um, all right, so real absolute value and projected values. This is really what the argument is. He's saying there is no such thing as a real or absolute value and that all values are just projections of value, just nonsensical, erroneous associations. You like cheese, you don't like cheese. Uh, tomato or potato, it doesn't, you know, it's all that kind of crap, that there is no meaningful difference between Mangala coming to Earth, <laughs> back to Earth, and torturing everybody on Earth, putting them all on gurneys and just slicing them into little tiny bits, just as good as if um, Barney the Dinosaur came and gave everybody a cupcake. Same difference, doesn't matter. No difference between those two worlds at all. This asshole would just keep arguing that that's the truth. Uh, because he's an asshole. So I'll just draw a picture again just for the hell of it. Um, <laughs> so what I did was I drew the brain. Blah, 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 blah. So I'll do it again. Brains, I've said it many times. Brains, there's a brain. Okay, brain creates by having feelings 
Okay, value. So feelings have value right in them. They're intrinsically, <laughs> intrinsically valuable. They have it written right on them. They are by their very creation by your brain feeling rich. So horrible suffering as a feeling, the feeling of any kind of really, really bad pain or bad nausea or bad, some bad feelings. And you have feelings that are benign or good. You know, they, they take away your pain. So pulling the nail out of your eye, pulling the thorn out of your butt. These things feel good because it takes you away from your tension or takes you away from your something that's causing you an irritation. It removes irritation. Irritation bad, feeling good, good. This is what the brain does. It produces it. This is what it produces is consciousness. Oh, shit. You know, it produces behavior ultimately, but obviously consciousness is a step put there for a reason. It doesn't exist for no reason. Why does it exist? Because nature needed to make a thing called a whip and a carrot. And uh, it really just made a whip. And the carrot is basically just saying, I'll quit whipping you. But you're probably way too dumb to get that. I've probably said those exact words, but you really, you really are too stupid to even understand that. You're probably too stupid to figure out, oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so you're saying the good things are really the removal of bad things. Oh yeah. No, you're way too stupid. Anyway, um, so the brain produces this thing. It's a fact. And these feelings have value. Experiences have value. It's either a good experience or bad experience. Or you could say it's a bad experience or a less bad experience if you want to be technical about it. But they clearly come in the range. Bad and not so bad. That's the truth. All right, so anyway, so your brain associates, you know, creates these feelings as it establishes connection to things. Now, 90% of the things it establishes these connections to, these things are valueless crap. They could be anything. It could be, instead of diamonds, it could be rubies. Instead of emeralds, it could be pearls. It could be a lump of cheese. It could be anything. What, what, what creates a little good feeling, okay? You could enjoy roulette, or you could enjoy blackjack, or you could enjoy the slot machines. You know, all kinds of choices about things that you associate, your brain associates with creating good feelings or creating bad feelings. But the ones that are logically connected, right? So that's 90% of what you feel is connected to stupid things. So it just matters, well, what soap opera are you watching? Days of our lives or general hospital. It doesn't really goddamn matter. But it does matter when it comes to recognizing the difference between happy little child eating cupcake and happy and sad little child with fucking nail in its eye. That is a logical recognition of that a value engine is in trouble. When a value engine is in trouble, that is a rational time for you to say, for alarms to go off and for you to realize we got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. Why did Houston have a problem? Because there were we's up there in that fucking spaceship. If there was no we up there, Houston could just say, oh, well, we wasted a little bit of money on that robot, right? But no, it's because there were sentient beings on that capsule that's what me meant that Houston had a fucking problem. The sentient beings were in harm's way. And again, I shouldn't have to say these things. So anyway, 10% of what we value is value because it has real value. The feelings of your pets and the feelings of the other people in the world and you know, economic policy or this or that or some other thing because you understand the harm that exists and that the harm can be cured or fixed or prevented because of some action. So these are associations between your feelings and the world that are rational but the rest of them aren't rationally established they're established by silly biology okay your food desire is biology saying telling you what to do uh, your hunger and your need to satiate it uh, your horniness right there again your ego these are all things mechanisms created by nature to oblige you to fight and to compete and to play its stupid little silly game. But your intelligence is capable of seeing past that silly game and recognize the real value isn't the diamonds, isn't the money, isn't the bullshit. 
The real value is the welfare of the feeling organisms. So anyway. So anyway, I played all of this before, but <laughs> so I'll spare you that. We'll just pick it up somewhere here in the middle. Fuck it. It's all just such drivel, patronizing nonsense. You just keep, yeah, because you can't paraphrase the argument honestly. It's just so fucking dishonest. Because we've been down this road so many times. And I just, like I said, you just keep changing the goalposts now. He's talking like nail in the eye and cupcakes are, are, weren't just the metaphors used to establish that uh, the imbecility of his argument. These things were only brought up because he was stating there was no real, that, that your brain's um, association with negative things with <laughs> negative feelings and positive things with positive feelings, that those two things, it was just an illusion in your head and therefore it doesn't mean anything. And so I only brought it up to point out, well, if you think there's no value difference, an actual good or bad event a difference between nail and eye and cupcake, you're an insane lunatic. And this isn't, he's not counter-arguing, he's just rephrasing his imbecility, and it serves him no purpose. Taking the amendment vote makes me room towards it. What do I mean is, is... See, he's talking now about running towards these things, because the, of the thing. And it's not the thing. You run towards the nail of the cupcake and away from the nail in the eye because of the feelings they produce. If they didn't produce a feeling, if they weren't threatening to produce a feeling, if they weren't promising to produ produce a feeling, you wouldn't run towards them. You wouldn't run towards the cupcake if you knew it was going to give you diarrhea. And you wouldn't run away from the nail in the eye if you knew that if you have a nail in your eye, you won't end up with a telephone near butt, telephone pole up your butt. His response is the same uh, to, to phenomena to him as it is to me. That is the relationship of saying that. I value this to experience. He values it to experience. The problem is... Yeah, see, again, so he's turned the, these things into, again, objects, again, instead of representations of the feelings they produce. So once they're objects, then he can play the silly game. They were established as representations of the worst negative feeling you could experience and the best positive feeling you could experience. So he's just negated the experiential element and is now just playing games again. I mean, you know, this is, I mean, this is obvious, right? I mean, there's no, no one could make, make the mistake that was making the argument that the actual nail is somehow a bad thing. I mean, no one reasonable or fair. Is the construction of some abstract other value scale which imbues an all that cupcake for anybody should be solved and I have an obligation to, to go out and give people so, so again he just completely misses the arguments that has been made over and over and over again. Even he pointed out that I would say that these goods are only good relative to the bads eliminated. So again, you don't have to give anybody a cupcake. If you take all the nails out of the eye and all the nails out of the butt and all the nails out of the ear, you take all the harms, the deprivations out, you won't have to give them the cupcake because they'll already be there. They'll already be in bliss. So yes, as you pull the negatives out, you will create the cupcakes without even having to bake one. So you have no obligation to give people that. That they'll have if you take away their fetters. Cupcakes, perhaps? Because if I have the obligation to remove nails in eye, how is it, how could it be anything but arbitrary? Because you're an idiot. Okay, again, it was pointed out so many times. You know, you've heard the word uh, negative utilitarian. And certainly I've made the point many, many times that I've just made it in this video again, but I'll state it again. See, see, he just can't understand it. That there is no real carrot. The carrot, the, the desire mechanism, okay, it, it creates a negative to get rid of. It's, a, it's an illusion. It's really whipping you, okay, and you're getting, when you get the carrot, you get relieved of the whip. There is no real carrot. The carrot just stops the whip. It stops the pain. It stops the deprivation. If I don't have the obligation to run around handing cupcakes out. 
Again, uh, you the, the cupcakes get handed out automatically as you remove the negatives from people's lives. As you extract nails from their heart and other parts of their body, they will automatically be taken to cupcake heaven. This is the result gap uh, that in Mendel. So again, this nonsense of a gap. There's no gap, okay? Uh, the brain is conscious. Consciousness creates feelings. Feelings have value. You ought to have positive rather than negative value states. I mean, the ought is built into the word value. As soon as you have created valuable feelings, you've created ought. Ought can't exist in a value-rich universe. And I'm saying as soon as you create sentience, you create all kinds of oughts. Fails the bridge. I, I don't think there's any, there's no, I, I mean, again, to do, 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 is there anybody who has a problem building this bridge between the word ought and the word value? The word sentient organism and the word ought? You have a problem making a bridge between those two things? I mean, fuck, you're, you're just so fucking stupid. If you can't see that bridge, you, <sighs> you're an idiot. You suck. You can't be, you just can't be more fucking goddamn broken. You have missed the most obvious bridge in the universe. You have missed, you are blind to the biggest sun there is. Just say certain comments like, Again, he's not playing my video or exactly quoting me. He just keeps misparaphrasing me because that's the weaselly cunt bastard fucker he is. Well, I don't see anything else. No, what I've said is I don't. There's no argument you're going to make. I mean, I, I my personal experience is okay. I know what pain and suffering is. If I see it in somebody else, I know the pain and suffering they're experiencing is just as valuable as mine. I can make no rational argument. I can hear none in my head that says somehow my Suffering is worth getting rid of. Their suffering is not worth getting rid of. My suffering is bad. Somehow their suffering isn't bad. How do I rationally do that? How do I rationally say their suffering is okay, my suffering's not okay? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever to me. I can't. I haven't heard you say anything that could possibly make a difference. You're just a bigot and an idiot. But that is not even an argument. If he could classify what everything else is, yeah, what the criteria is. Yeah, the criteria is sentience, a brain that generates feelings. Value is created when feelings are created. As soon as something is having a feeling, value is in the universe. I've said that over and over again. I don't hear anything you're saying. I don't hear any, any counter argument to say why that's a ludicrous premise. It is the most obvious thing in my existence, it's the most obvious fact I know of, is the fact that my feelings matter. Feelings fucking matter. State of being mentally matters very, very much. Very, very important, very, very significant, very, very everything that value should be, that's what feelings are. Everything that value should be, feelings are. And through a logical proof, show that he has um, crossed off every example as, as somehow inapplicable, then perhaps he might have a point. But firstly, he can't do that. And if he, even if he tried. To... Why would I have to do that? That's just an idiotic premise. I just have to put them in categories. Again, that was the whole purpose of establishing the extreme between a cupcake and a nail in the eye. We can tell the extremes. Those are the only ones we have to worry about are the extremes. I don't care about things that are, you know, I, I, there's a thorn in your toe. Oh, well, that's bad. But, uh, yeah, let's not spend $10 to pull it out. You know, maybe it'll work its way out. All right, that, that's not that conversation. The conversation is about these clear distinctions. We can tell what's not on the fence, not even close to a fence, nowhere near a fence. So again, this is just a lie that somehow we can't make absolute statements or know something absolutely and certainly um, unless we know every single instance, unless we know exactly where everything is on the scale. We don't have to know where everything is on the scale. 
That's just a, f a false premise. To do that. He would be doing it with a purpose to demonstrate what he believes. I don't need to demonstrate what I believe, idiot. What I have to do is try to explain it to morons. And, and there, I, there's no way to explain it to a moron. I mean, if you can't see the bridge from, from value being created by feelings to island of ought, then, yeah, you're just too stupid for the conversation. I, I have no help for you. That's what I keep telling you. You're too stupid. Your brain no worky. Too fucking dumb. You're retarded. Uh, you got no battery. And the very purpose of, of, of setting out to do that with his criteria would be questionable as, as to who says I have to do that in the first place. Um, I don't even know what that means. I don't really care. Um, I, I don't care what you do. Again, I, I'm just telling you, you're not making a rational argument to me explaining how your nihilism makes any sense whatsoever. I personally experience consciousness. Consciousness seems pretty fucking interesting. And there's just no way me getting around the fact that biologically it seems obvious the very fact that I'm conscious was to create value, to create it for the use of creating whips and carrots. There could be no whip and no carrot without this creation of value. And that there is value in these, this, this illusion that we're experiencing of consciousness. There's just no denying its value. So this is the principal difference uh, of opinion. And yeah, you wish to make some kind of silly argument that somehow because it's just a configuration in brain space that it doesn't matter if Mangula comes here and tortures every sentient being on Earth. It would be just as cool as if Barney the Dinosaur comes to Earth and gives everybody cupcakes. You can't tell the difference. I think you're insane. What I don't understand is how he can lament about the purposelessness of evolution. I don't lament its perfect purposelessness as I've titled videos. I lament its unintelligent design. It's a poor, a pitiful, a stupid, and idiotic design. To people and suggest that it is a valueless game continually without using those words. Well, again, you're not, you're getting misparaphrasing me some more. So, yeah, lie some more, fatty. When underpinning that uh, assertion, all the time is this um, assertion that there is a, a, an abstract, separate, intrinsic value scale. No, they're sentient brains. They create value when they have feeling experience. Period. So you see, if there was, then men would be, would be right about the unethical purposelessness of evolution. Again, it's not that it's purposelessness, that it's a bad design. Again, you just can't get it right, can you? Obviously, it has no purpose because there's no God, jackass. But beyond not having a purpose, it has no reason. It has no logic. It has no anything rational as part of its construction. It's crude, stupid force. And, but he knows this is the weak point of his argument. Liar. Lie some more. There's no weak point in my argument. You want to take a $10,000 polygraph challenge, jackass? You're the one desperate playing fucking insipid misparaphrasing games. So he always begins with the psychological appeal of... Liar. Liar. You're just a fucking liar. It's not like it's a, the psychological appeal is a... That's the function of value, you jackass. That's right. Value... Uh, the, the waste of it, the destruction of valuable things, is harmful to our psychology. Well, most rational people anyway. Most rational people will be bludgeoned psych psychologically by watching sentient beings in harmful states. Yeah, that's just a fact, shithead. 
I didn't make that happen. That's what I'm critiquing, jackass. The emotional barbaricness um, the of the superficial level of nature and evolution. Yes, the waste of conscious suffering by crude, stupid forces that don't know no better. Rather than every time beginning with new uh, articulations of uh, his, his fundamentals. Why would I make new articulations? Why would I change the argument? The argument is sentient feelings, brains create sentient feeling experience. Those conscious experiences are tainted, are intrinsically reeking of value as experiences in and of themselves. In and of themselves, they have a value stench. I should hope that everybody does concede that in the beginnings of understanding values, value scales in terms of... Um, yeah, well, you don't understand them. You don't understand that, that uh, you don't understand what a projected value is. You don't understand what a relative value is. You don't understand that being taken out of a negative condition and put in a less negative condition, although you're still in a negative condition, is a positive condition. If both of your feet are on fire and I put one of your feet out, although you're still in a negative condition of having one foot on fire, you're in a much better position than you were before. So a good thing has happened. So it would be a value good to put one of the feet out, but it wouldn't be a value good because if one of your feet is still on fire. You still wouldn't be in a good state. Dumbass, fat ass, generally speaking ass. Harm analysis um, and suffering and so on and so forth. It is existent as an understanding on a personal level. And Again, it's this personal level. We're, we're not talking about what I personally project value to be. So again, there's nothing in anything I've talked about about any of my personal projections of value. They have all been properly declared irrelevant to the conversation. The conversation is about whether value designations relative to um, um, acknowledging value experiences in other sentient beings, whether they are rationally based. Is it logical and rational to um, identify with value experiences when they happen in other organisms? Is it rational and logical for me to realize pain bad when it happens to me pain bad when it happens to them. Is that a rational and logical statement? Yes, it is. I can say truths about those claims, like I will move toward cupcake. Again, he's ignore he just ignores the feelings. He's talking again about the symbol and ignoring what is we're really moving toward or away from, which is the sensations because they're good or bad sensations in and of themselves. Cupcake, no matter. Sensation caused by cupcake, that matters. I will move away from nailing the eye. All understandings will have um, an expressible truth uh, statement about them. If they are indeed truly born from what you call right, that's right. Nail in the eye causes psychological, physiological changes to the brain state, which forces the brain up mechanically to pre create conscious negative sensation. Sensation intrinsically labeled negative, intrinsically functioning as a negative for a fundamental biological purpose. It is value creation for the purpose of value optimization. The brain could not optimize value if it first cannot recognize value. 
It has to create value before it can manage value. Creates value through the creation of value experiences. Those things which are not born from logical understandings, but are merely blank uh, definitional assertions, stand as such with no supporting Again, I don't know what those would be. So again, he provides no evidence of what he's critiquing here. None. Isn't that great? So, so it's it's a missing premise. So you can't. That's like the ultimate straw man. There's no fucking man, jackass. You forgot to build the man. You can't even have a proper straw man unless you actually are talking about something. Fuckhead. Um, science, mathematics, logic, or philosophy. They just merely are uh, asserted definitions. Right. What is the asserted definition? Brain creates consciousness. Consciousness contains feeling experience. Feeling experiences have value by intrinsic function, by their very design. Those are the assertions. Do you have a counter argument for any of them? No. Is there any reason not to believe any of them? No. Why am I responding to you? <laughs> yeah, I don't have a good answer. You're an idiot. The question is, is what type of assertion is the amendum abstract, external? Um... Again, it's not external, it's internal. The brain creates value states. Yes, consciousness is an illusion, but as Einstein said about time, it's one hell of an illusion. It, as somebody who has experienced it, I cannot confuse it with something meaningless. As, as hard as I might try, I cannot make my consciousness meaningless. It is the most meaningless, meaningful thing happening around me. I can't see a single thing in my environment that could possibly be as meaningful as it, except for the consciousness of another sentient being. Separate intrinsic value scale. Is it an existent thing as... Uh, definitional assertion, or does it indeed have a logic that is putting it forward? And I would say that... Yeah, a logic, again, brains create consciousness, consciousness is composed of feeling sensations, feeling sensations are by intrinsic function, uh, categorizable as good or bad, value is now created. There is no logic putting it forward. I, I thought about doing this in the beginning just to talk about general moral uh, values. One person might say that. Um, you know, moral values, you know, what a waste of time. Treatment of the sick is more important than treatment of the elderly, say. And one more. So, so now he's taking, going to take a, t t a bunch of you know, barely dis detectable value circumstances and compare them. So we're way off of a nail in the eye and cupcake, and now we're doing the let's talk about all this little crap on the fence. Well, one person might say treatment of the children is uh, far more important than the treating of the sick, you know. So again, this has nothing to do with any arguments I've made. I've made no videos about comparing children to elderly, to any of this, to any of that. I don't give a shit one way or the other. I don't see any function in it at all as a, as a fucking, it's not a subject of any of my videos. 4,000 videos, this is not the subject of any of my value videos. So again, straw man, scapegoat, false accusation, lying. That's all. You're a liar. So, so these, these are various... Um value judgments we make, which again are arbitrary in the sense of arbitrary meaning it is a personal uh, choice. Look, it wouldn't be arbitrary if you just say one will get a cupcake um, and, and you have nail in the eye and you have cupcake and you have a circumstance where they both get cupcakes, you have a circumstance where they both get nails in the eye and you have a substance, circumstance where one gets a cupcake and one gets a nail in the eye. The logic is you choose both gets cupcake. No, no, slam dunk. Not complicated at all. And decision. This, in the sense of, if there was an external uh, 
absolute scale would be to assert that there is a definitive Again, these are the things not stated as having the as having absolute quantitative um, knowledge. We don't have absolute knowledge of the history of persons and what will happen to them and how much they'll maximize any potential they might have or they, they, how much they might squander it. These decisions are in, intrinsically difficult because you can't. You're not given a guarantee that this won't get cancer and that this one will get herpes and then you're making some comparison between cancer and herpes or something you're not even given those explicit things so again this is just such a this is just such a dodge this is not the subject of my value videos this is just playing games with with splinters on the fence um, ordering to whether uh, children are more important than uh, elderly and so on and so forth None of them can be permittably tortured for your own gratification. So your fucking selfish purposes can never be, um, you cannot impose cost on them for your profit. That's the moral imperative. Um, perhaps nail in the eye is the same for children, elderly, and sick. I'm sure the men would press that point. But I just wanted to talk about... Right, right. So you wanted to change the subject in the middle of the video just for no good reason whatsoever. So I think I'll just sit here and... Yeah, in the middle of the video, maybe I'll just start talking about... I don't know... Frogs and toads. Which is better, a frog or a toad? Some, some, some other... Again, uh, nothing to do with any of my videos. I don't even, I don't like the word moral. Moral judgments are idiotic, uh, whatever, fuck you. All there is is ethics, and you try to do the best job you can to do what maximizes comfort and minimizes harm. Oh. Fairly distributed. No. You and Teddy are now advanced value. Um, yeah, well, whatever. You're as fat as the teddy bear. Probably as fat-headed. So, so what, what, what is this patronizing nonsense? What, you think it's funny? Ha, 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 ha. Whatever. No counter-argument. Again, go ahead, explain to me why consciousness doesn't mean anything. It's just, uh, just neural connections. Go ahead. Convince me that my consciousness is irrelevant. Whether I have a nail in my eye, or whether I'm eating a cupcake, irrelevant. Doesn't matter. No real value involved. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Ah, Just tedious asshole. Obnoxious, tedious idiot. Well, I see Trick is playing with him. It isn't this distinction between cake and experience that we are saying you s sometimes confuse, but rather the difference between intrinsic evaluations such as I evaluate the cupcake as good and nail in the eye as bad. Oh, whatever he's saying, it's a long way. It just doesn't matter. There's projected value and then there's recognition of actual value. You can project silly things with value and you can recognize things that have real value. Those are two things you can do. <laughs> and I'm saying one of them exists. Yes, the, the, the acknowledging real value is something your brain can do. You can acknowledge the existence of things that have real value. You can waste your time being addicted to some silly soap opera. You can waste your time, <laughs> you know, uh, fulfilling your natural impulses to squeeze hooters um, or and and or you can also acknowledge the existence of real value you can get yourself addicted to a video game or not doesn't really matter or and <laughs> you can recognize real value in the other sentient organisms walking around on planet Earth are crawling. 
as the case may be. I mean, it's just, it, it just isn't that complicated. There's real value, projected value. There's a, attachment value and, and logically acknowledged value. Logic will point to value. Psychology will make crap valuable. Those are the two functions. One of them's a clever and smart function. One of them's a stupid nature. You can let nature tell you what is real and you'll not get it right. Or you can let your intelligence do the simple logic of saying, yes, it's bad for me. Yes, bad feelings are bad for them. Not hard. Suffering bad when it happens to my brain. Suffering bad when it happens to some other brain. Yes, logically easy. Anyway, enough.